to another episode of the J-Pod, Jefferson School District's very own podcast. I'm your host, Superintendent Brad Kater, and I'm joined by my co-host, Becca Mallory. Good morning, Becca. Good morning. How are you today on this fine, uh, cloudy, blustery day? I loved the sunshine about 20 minutes ago. That was nice. <laughs> but I think that's over. Yeah. It's supposed to be raining for a while. Typical uh, Oregon. Yeah, typical Oregon. We're back into uh, dark nights and uh, short days. Wait. Yeah. So that's all good. <laughs> that's why we love it here. Um, so our podcast is a reminder to everybody uh, listening is designed to strengthen the connection between our community and our school. We talk about events coming up. We describe programs so you're more well, well aware of how they function. And we interview students and teachers regarding various topics. And I'm really excited today because we are interviewing uh, one of my favorite clubs, the Future Farmers of America, FFA. FFA. Yes. I'm excited about today's. This is fun. Yeah, this is going to be good. And um, I think FFA is, is a, a well-known um, uh, club that is in schools throughout Oregon, and, and people are um, really invested in their communities in this, and a lot of people are really excited about being part of it. So we wanted to bring in a, the crew that, that uh, can talk about our own very FFA club here in Jefferson and find out a little bit more about who these folks are and, and what their experience is like. So um, I am with um, uh, our instructor, Mr. Rick Martin. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have six students with us today. Um, we have uh, Trevor, Ryan, Drew, Peyton, Peyton Lynn, and Mackenzie. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was in sync. That, that was awesome. Was good. Yeah, but they didn't rehearse that. I, actually, that was good. So um, we're going to start, uh, first of all, with, with you, Mr. Martin, if you wouldn't mind, just to kind of tee us off here a little. Mm -hmm. um, and just to give us a little background uh, like into FFA, like what... Um, what is the program? Um, you know, what, what do you guys do during the year? And like, how long have you been a part of it? Um, for my part of it, I've been involved with the FFA when I was even in high school as a student at Silicon High School. I was involved with the FFA program. Um, when I said become a teacher, this is my 20, starting my 28th year in the ag program. Okay. Um, I just finished up 20 years here at, at Jefferson, and so. Thanks. I was seven years at Central Land too. So. Uh, the FFA program is kind of a it's an intracurricular um, part of the program, whereas the FFA is actually taught within the classroom. We're different with extracurricular like football or volleyball. That's outside of school, but FFA is taught within the, within the cycle. So these guys come to your class. Mm -hmm. You go. You have a curriculum, right? And then you guys go out and do things. Right. So, so does this mean we have farm animals out here? Um, we just basically have farm animals out here just during, they'll come in right around the end of March, and then they'll finish right right around the count there, which is right out now, July 4th, right after July 4th. So that's when we have the animals here. Other than we have some chickens that are year around, kind of, so it's Chickens are. Yeah, yeah. they're known to be year around. Yeah. I mean, I have a whole bunch at home. Yeah. yeah. I think we're at 17 right now in my house. Oh, wow. oh that's a lot right. of chickens. All right. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's that sounds like uh, quite an amazing. I didn't know that it was actually a classroom too. Like you know, I mean, there's there's that element of sitting and learning. So I want to hear a little bit yeah. about that. But so with the F Ad program, is kind of a three ring model. They have. The classroom lab, they have the SE, which is supervised experience. Yeah. And then um, the FFA. So they're all connected together. Mm -hmm. So we have actually in the classroom itself, it's that training model that all the programs all the Gotcha. Time. Okay. Well, that is really cool. So now let's meet our, our student guests uh, today. And uh, we're going to start with our seniors, uh, Trevor and Ryan. Uh, Trevor, um, um, if you would sort of lead us off here, and what kind of got you into FFA, and how long have you been part of it? Uh, I've been in part of FFA since my freshman year. Um, what kind of got me into it was uh, my dad was in it, my grandpa was in it, stuff like that, and uh, my mom's a teacher here at the school, so we would always come up here for the FFA banquets and the uh, like the freshman orientation nights or the orientation nights, stuff like that, and the uh, Seen Addie Howell, Mr. Howell's daughter, go on and be a state officer and go and 
they and his brother too, Ryan's brother actually, um, go and achieve things in it. I thought it was pretty cool seeing how far you can go with it and how many people you can meet. Yeah. So that's why I joined. But That kind of leads with the question I had was, uh, how does this like lead you guys into your real world experiences? Like what is this teaching you that you're going to use when you graduate? Uh, it will, it teach you a lot of like networking stuff. And like when we go to events like this, like national convention or state convention or even district to, um, we go to like workshops, so to speak. And then they'll teach us stuff about like, uh, goal setting and planning and, uh, how to manage things and manage groups of people or, uh, complete tasks with other groups of people. So it just kind of helps you out. It puts you in like a real situation, so to speak. Yeah. For, when you eventually do have a job. So it's practical, it's leadership skills, it's working in a group. Um, all the things that we're really looking at in, in terms of our 21st century learning is you know how to how to function in those kinds of environments and you're really getting that hands-on experience. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, great. How about you, Ryan? Um, so yeah, my brother was an FFA. Um, kind of watching him, I uh, showed like a little bit of interest in it, but I never thought I would get so involved in it. Um, so I said, you know, why not? Uh, when I became a freshman, I joined and I fell in love with it and um, ended up running for district office, got that. Um, well, good. That was. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, what got you so involved? What, what was it that really hooked you? Um, so he uh, was a state officer uh, when I was in eighth grade. So seeing that, I thought that was really cool. Um, he just got to travel around Oregon, teach uh, other students about agriculture, um, and just seeing all the, like all the places he went, all the people he met, uh, really got me interested. You went to Spain too. Yeah, I went to Spain. Okay. That was really cool. So what does it mean for those uh, not ag knowledge? Uh, what does it mean to be a district officer? Um, so at the district level, we have a team of six people just as like the state level and the national level, it's the same thing. Um, so we like help put on county fair, um, just help out at different events, leadership camp. We help put that on. Uh, yeah. Very cool. That's very real world. And so Mr. Martin here. Um, so we're at the next level, we have 10 schools that in Marion County that we compete against or work with too. So they're all at the so district officers, 10 other schools that work in our district. Oh, okay. So compete against, but also work together. Yes. So there's yeah. that, two, that dual duality piece that you're actually have shared goals, working to build each other's abilities, but also having some, you know, who's got the best sheep or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the most well behaved chicken. I feel like you would know more about this than I do because my chickens are not well behaved. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't know much. Um, so, uh, uh, because we have a lot of group, is there anybody else that wants to um, uh, tell us a little bit about what got you involved? And we have the rest of the crew as juniors. So, um, juniors, anyone? What got you involved? Well, Drew here. What first got me involved in ag and FFA was just my family family's history in it and them being involved in it and actually further finding a job in real life that involved agriculture and found connections through FFA and ag that helped them get to where they were for their job in the real life. <laughs> you get the swallow. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so let's uh, let's jump to national convention. You guys just come back from that. So uh, Mackenzie, can you help us understand like what what was that experience like? Um, well, just flying as like a group. It was so fun. Like we never get to do stuff outside of school, so that right. was really different. And then we got to meet tons of people from all around the U.S. instead of just like the county, because usually we meet, like we've met everybody from the schools around us already, so it was fun to meet different people. Where'd you guys go? Um, Indianapolis, so we went. Indiana? We, yeah. Wow. It was really different. How long of a flight is that? <laughs> um, we had two separate flights, so the first one to Arizona is like two hours. <laughs> oh, it's at, yeah, and then from Arizona to Indiana, I think it was around two hours. Also. Okay, not terrible. Good quality time together. Yes, <laughs> we spent a lot of quality time. Lots of time. Yeah. 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 We had a couple hours delay, so uh, it's kind of 
at the airport. It was nice that we had those two hour delays. We weren't rushing to the next. Right. They don't run into the next. Right. right. So it's even on the way back home, we, we had a layover in Denver, and Denver's a huge airport. And yeah. yeah. Luckily, we basically had to load up on the same one that we got off, so it was nice. Oh, that's good. I've had flights where you have to run clear across the other side of the airport exactly. in 20 minutes. Yeah. You're like, don't leave me behind. Yeah. Hopefully, my bag makes it. So, Peyton Lynn and Peyton, what, what did you guys get from that national convention? Like, what? It was so super cool. What, what did you? What did you end up doing and learning? Um. Hey, in here. Um, a lot of what Kinsey said, just talking to a bunch of new people. We went to a workshop that was run by a previous state officer, and we learned about um, good habits. And yeah, just a lot of meeting people and talking. Did you find any differences between the people you met? Like, you know, are, diff are, are people different from Indianapolis or other parts of the country? Or, or, or did you guys all kind of... Was everybody kind of the same? Um, lots of people had some funny accents, but... <laughs> <laughs> but we don't. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, Peyton here, or Peyton Lynn. Uh, I think we just, like, we also got, like, other than meeting new people outside of our state and out of, like, our district, I think we also got to, like, bond with, like, our chapter a lot more. Because at, like, fairs and stuff, you're kind of, like off doing your own thing and not everybody's there at the same time. So I think we really like got like hotel time was fun. We would just like sit there and talk and laugh and just have a good time. And then dinners was really fun where we just sat down, ate, like a lot of us were off of our phones. So we like got real like face to face, like actual conversation. How well, did you do that? Yeah, you, can't, yeah, you, can't, you, can't, you can't beat that. That's really great. So is this every year? Um, so our chapter is more of a every other two or three years. Last time we went was in 2017, and then we we're, were planning on going in 2019, but some things happened, and then um, then COVID hit. So there's another two years that were kind of, and this, this group of students were just seemed to fit. It was the right year to go. So um, it, this is for me. I, I wrote down. Um, let's see, I would. This is the sixth time as a teacher for Jefferson I've been to the National Convention in the 20 years. I was one year at Central Grand, so I've been a total of seven national wow. conventions with students and that. So how have they differentiated from year to year? Um they have different it's different a little bit. Um, this year, um, all the other national conventions we've always take like a Oregon delegation photo, a state photo of just all of Oregon. And this year we didn't have it, but I guess they kind of did away with it right after the pandemic. So we we're kind of hoping to have a, an Oregon delegation because I have the Oregon delegation pictures in the ag room, and as you can see, and they always start, like, Where's Martin at? So, yeah, so yeah. Um, and this is, I've been to three different convention sites. The first one I went was at Kansas City, um, and that last year, and then. Louisville and Indianapolis. Okay. So did you guys travel with other Oregon leaders? Was there like from people that you know within the, the district? Uh, yeah, we went with uh, Mount Angel or Kennedy. Uh -huh. So we picked them up on the way to the airport and then uh, we traveled there and back with them. Okay. That's great. That's good. So you, you guys make contacts and connections uh, across the uh, valley and friends that you can take on, you know, as those trips throughout your life. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Can we talk about sheep? <laughs> <laughs> because I am really interested in sheep and the, the idea. Because I when, last year when I came back to the barn, we have a new barn, yes. right? And not everybody listening maybe knows this, but we built this new barn, part of, uh, in, in part, large part for it. Okay? And so I went back there last year and there was animals in there. <laughs> and and then there was somebody who painted a street for somebody, and it was, unfortunately, we had some kind of thing. But but the we we had this inside the barn. We have people that like have to take care of the sheep. Is that you guys? Do you have you each get a sheep, and how does yeah. that work? Yeah, you have to pay for it. Like what um, yeah, this is Peyton Lynn. So I've been showing sheep for since I was like eleven through my 4-H group and with my family, and we 
like this year or last year, I guess, I found a buyer for everybody. So, cause I knew her from before. So I just kind of lined it up for everybody. And we all picked a date. We went, we picked out our sheep with her. We paid like what, 350, I think this year, which is not terrible, especially for like some, what other people bought their lambs for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, so we just like picked them up. We brought them back. Uh, we all like penned with each other and then just raised them from there. Ah, uh, and so then the idea is that at, at the county fair, right? Mm -hmm. The state fair, rather. The county fair. Oh, the county fair. Yeah. Mary County Fair. Mary County Fair. Yeah. Uh, and you bring them and then the judges come and what are they looking for? When they, like, how do you, is it about how they're sheared or like what, what's the, what's a good sheep that gets a prize? So, these animals are eternal animals, so they're their market animal. Okay. And so they're looking for muscle weight. Um, uh, just kind of like a, a solid looking solid animal. animal and they're going to, um, you know, you're going to sell them right. there. Right. So I assume that that means you're not buying baby sheep. Um, they're pretty they're young. They're pretty young. Months old, yeah. I think because they're raised. They're born in like... They're about 70 pounds. Lambs. Yeah. Yeah. And then we raise them to the left. Yeah. It's my two-year-old's obsession right now is farm animals. Although for her, everything is a cow. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to teach her that horses are not cows mm -hmm. and sheep are not cows, but and, she calls them cows anyway. Yeah. In the barn, it, it's allowed um, for more members to show animals because not everybody has a piece of property that can have an animal. Right. This barn allows for students that live in town to have opportunities to raise yes. their animals. That's cool. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I love the fact that you guys are in <laughs> I love the fact that you have this connection with animals and agriculture um, because that I think is, is you know such an important part of our um, our lives and um, and I would love to be able to talk more about uh, animals. We have just a couple minutes left, and with just a couple minutes left, though, um, uh, you know I didn't get to um, maybe explore everything from everybody here about your experience in FFK. Um, is there anybody who'd like to add? You know, kind of what. Um, you know, your experience about being an FFA and what would you say to those kids who are not in it yet and maybe thinking about joining? What what would your pitch be to to join FFA? Don't everybody go at once. <laughs> um, I was going to say, uh, I was Ryan here. Um, I say just, just try it out. Like that's what I did. I didn't think it was going to be for me completely. And it ended up changing my mind, especially I came from being a very introverted person, didn't like to talk to people. I joined up with that. That was always something I really wanted to uh, learn how to do is be able to actually communicate with people effectively. Right. And uh, that was probably the most valuable skill I've learned. And it was within a year or two being in the organization. Very good. That's Thank awesome. You. Yeah. One more quick one. What would you say? They're all like those guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, he don't remember the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell students that are interested but not quite ready? Uh, it teaches you a lot of like life lessons, like public speaking, as Ryan said, and you get to spend a class with all of our favorite teacher, Mr. Martin, every day. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, I wanted to thank you for taking some time out of your busy school day to come and share your experience with FFA with us. Um, it really helps us uh, know a little bit more about what FFA is and, and the benefits of it. I really encourage any uh, young people out there that are not part of FFA, if you have any kind of interest um, in agriculture or animals and raising animals and going to the fair or going to the national or whatever, to just give it a try and to uh, come and come to a meeting. And, uh, Mr. Martin, thank you so much for yeah. your dedication and uh, your years of service and helping really grow an outstanding program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks thank for being you. here. Until thank next you. time. Thank you.